This week we are in Ballina along the Wild Atlantic Way, a thriving business town and a hugely popular holiday destination. In 2020, the North Mayo capital had much to look forward to. Then came the coronavirus, shutting down the country, devastating the local economy, while shops, businesses and sporting all cancelled. But the business community here, we're not going to take it lying down. They are resilient, they fought back, they adapted new ways of doing business and dare I say, even are optimistic about the future. Here's Mags Downey from the Ballina Chamber of Commerce. Ballina Chamber of Commerce, we've been operating for nearly 60 years. Um, we have, where our, our ethos is to be in business for businesses and we are all about the town for Ballina, for North Mayo, for the county as well. March, April, May 2020, Ballina is not what it usually is like. We have had to cancel our St. Patrick's Day parade. We've had no Easter weeks holidays, bank holidays. We've had no bank holidays in May. It's coming into June bank holiday and still Ballina is quiet. Our visitors aren't around. We have no fishermen visiting the, the, the famous River Moy. Our beautiful restaurants and bars are closed. Our hotels and spas are also quiet. There's nobody here. It's unbelievable. So with that in mind, Ballina Chamber of Commerce, we're working really, really hard to support our, our chamber members and all the business community in Ballina and North Mayo. Luckily enough, uh, Ballina Chamber of Commerce is working with the Chambers Network around the country. We also work with Chambers Ireland. We get a lot of support and a lot of uh, advice and uh, information from the whole network. And as a result, and by conducting a variety of surveys, we've also been able to influence government directive and government policies in supporting what is the best mechanisms, what's the best supports out there for our business community. Uh, a lot of the, the, the uh, supports that came from government, while they were very good, some were very confusing. There was an awful lot of information out there. A lot of it was debt-based supports, and we lobbied for grant aid supports. And as a result of that, you can see that the businesses can now avail of these supports through the local enterprise office and through a variety of government agencies as well. Ballina Chamber of Commerce is there to support the business community going forward. We're going into the next stages of reopening the town, the county and the country and we are going to be there with the business community all, all the way with them to offer support on what's the best advice to reopen their premises, how to make the premises safe for their staff and for their customers and how to give the best experience to those patrons who decide to come and shop in the town of Ballina. We're making sure that our town centre is safe. We've installed a number of hand sanitizers around the town centre so when people come into town they feel safe that they know that Ballina is one of the safest towns to shop. We're also working with the Ballina Municipal District Council, Mayo County Council, and we're collaborating with the local authority across the board so that we can all work together to ensure that we have a safe and pleasant environment for when our patrons return to shopping in town and choose to shop local and support local. The Connick Distillery Company set up in Ballina a few years ago, bringing a traditional style of Irish whisky back to the west of Ireland after an absence of over a century. When I visited the company prior to the coronavirus, they were distilling a dream in Ballina. But because of COVID-19, the company had to adapt very quickly to survive. Here's David Stapleton, the founder of the Connacht Whisky Company. This year was going to be a marquee year for us. Uh, Mayo's first Irish whiskey in 150 years since the Livingstons in Westport in the 1850s, there, thereabouts. Um, we we're going to launch this whiskey, a, a beautiful single malt whiskey. Now, obviously, with the advent of the COVID crisis, um, hospitality has shut down, the pubs are closed, the hotels are closed, um, not only in an Irish context, but also in an international context context so our customer base has, has in effect shut down um, obviously trying to launch a brand new Irish whiskey in that environment is is a challenge um, our revenues have collapsed 
because you know nobody is um, buying through the, the pubs and the restaurants and the hotel channels anymore. There are some off-license um, activities, as everybody will know, but that's really for the established brands, for the multinationals. So small craft distilleries like ourselves really struggles to be able to generate volume through those channels. So pretty much in the middle of, of March, we faced this, what everybody's calling a, an existential crisis. Um, we needed, we wanted to be able to maintain manufacturing operations. We make whiskey today, but we can't sell it for a period of up to four years and maybe longer afterwards. So if we have a break in production, I'll have a gap in, in my vintage in a number of years further down the road. So ultimately we want to try and sustain manufacturing operations. Um, but obviously when you've no revenue, trying to be able to, to pay for raw materials, support your suppliers, support your staff and keep the wheels turning here, that becomes a, a very significant challenge. Looking at what we may be able to do or what options were available to us, and they were obviously limited. As a distillery, the one thing that we have access to is alcohol. So we, we know how to, to blend and we know how to use alcohol, you know, in, in more on a consumption basis rather than in topical application. But the, the notion of being able to, to move into a space to leverage the alcohol, to be able to create something like a hand sanitizer became a, a, a very real opportunity for us. Um, it's not normal to us, our supply chain, we're used to, you know, 700 and 750 mil glass bottles versus a, a 250 mil Plastic bottle is a completely different supply chain. Um, the, the, the components of the sanitizer, obviously sanitizer, a lot of people are making sanitizer. So trying to access and harness a new supply chain became a very difficult proposition for us. We overcame it. There's a whole different layer of compliance and, and, and we had to apply to the Department of Agriculture to be able to get a, 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 a suitable um, approvals to be able to place the, the um, the sanitizer on the market. We were successful to be able to do that. And over the course of the last two months, I'd say that we've probably sold about 90 to 100,000 units, um, which has really helped to be able to, to keep the doors open here in some limited capacity. We've, we've been conscious that we wanted to, to serve Ballina, Mayo in some way. So we've supported the first responders, nursing homes, the HSE, the guards, Mayo Mountain Rescue, the Fire Brigade, all of those community services in, in a small way to ourselves or from ourselves to them and um, to show that we have, you know, we're very grateful as Ireland is to those people and the jobs that they do. This year, we are still trying hard to make sure that we launch Mayo's first single malt Irish whiskey in 150 years. The Twin Trees Hotel in Ballina was looking forward to a great year with tourist numbers way up. Then the coronavirus struck. Here's Rachel Smith Moylet of the Twin Trees Hotel. It's hard to swallow. You go to go home that night and I said, where are we going from here? What are we going to do? So it did take me a few weeks and my husband to, to gather our thoughts and say, How is the be what's the best way we're going to do this? How are we going to actually get back on track? And it's not just about a hotel, it's about the area, it's about Mayo, it's about Ballina, the Wild Atlantic Way. Everything was coming together nicely. The town has been really, really, really doing well with tourism. All of the hotels have been working together, all of the businesses. So things are really picking up. We had the other voices just the weekend before the place closed. All hotels were packed. So it was a great start to February. Actually, we were 30% up on last year. And then March and February, April and onwards, we're all looking really good. So we're going to have a bumper year. And we were excited because I was excited, the staff were excited and you can feel the buzz going around the town. After putting your heart and soul into a business, bringing it from a very, very low ebb in 2012 to bringing it to where it was in 20, 2020, we were looking ahead, fantastic year ahead, fantastic tours. Our business was growing all the time. We had a lot of business in the books. We had a lot of hard work put in the background. And then to think that this happened to the country and to all businesses, it was heartbreaking. Last week, um, we got the procedures from the HSE. We're still waiting on the IHF procedures that are going to be coming out, I think, this week. Um, and what we're going to be doing now with the place and when you come in, it will look different. The two meters it is going to look different, but we have a very large hotel. We have a very large foyer. We have a large bar and a large restaurant. And previously to um, in our 
summers we would have had a lot of tours in our restaurant so we couldn't open our restaurant to the local public because there were always groups of 30 and 50 every single night seven days a week from April until probably October not every day in October but you know it was busy busy spot with all of the Germans Americans buzzy people you know Scandinavians the market was growing in Ireland with Fulcher Ireland and the Wild Atlantic Way they've done Trojan work and it was really coming together so we don't have any of that this year there are no foreign visitors there will be no walk-in business there will be no outside there'll be no customers coming from far ab abroad like there used to be so we have to decide okay you have your local market how are you going to engage with the local people in Ireland where do they want to go you, it's about the area it's about what they can do when they get here and if they're safe so we have the space to keep you safe we have lots of nice gardens we have lots of nice space inside we're putting ideas together that you'll go up one stairs and come down another stairs there mightn't be a lift you mightn't the breakfast in the morning time will be a different place it will book in but it, it's all doable it's all doable it will work and we'll have the same great hospitality that we've always had the great food uh, the great custom because that's what hospitality is, is you know you're looking after customers and that's what i love to do i love meeting people i love engaging with them um, with with all of the new procedures in place for COVID, it, of course it's going to be a little different it's going to be very different but we still can't lose the warm welcome that we're so good at The Banga Summer Festival brings approximately 200,000 people into North Mayo every July and with an estimated return of 6 million euros into the economy of the region. This year's festival was a huge loss to the town as Paul Regan, the chairperson of the festival, outlines to me. Henry, this festival, the Banga, Banga Summer Festival, is iconic. It's been running for over 50 years in the town. We're unbelievably proud of its history, of its achievements, of what it does for the area. It brings thousands of visitors into Ballina every year. It brings it, it, it brings so many people home to Ballina. They make it their annual holiday. For, of, of all years, we have a fantastic group of people running the festival. The stakeholders, uh, that is the business people, they have really come on board the last two years. So we, we had it put to bed, Henry. We had everything done. We had a full programme of events. So it was gutty. It really was that we had to put the plug. And uh, not even writing off this year completely, Henry. What we would love to do maybe come September, October, when it's obviously safe to do so, we would love to run a heritage weekend maybe. Just something to say that we did something for Ballina this year, and just to say that, that we had some continuation in the in, in the festival. Like we were lucky this year, Henry. The people that originally started off Heritage Day, they were a wonderful group of people. They had actually come back on board to run Heritage this year to bring it back to the real traditional heritage that we were used to, that we love to see. Them making it the buckets on the streets, milk churning, all that sort of stuff. So we are planning, please God, in October maybe, that we will have a heritage weekend. The festival they say brings in in the region of six to eight million euro into the town over, over the duration of the week. It's, it's a huge loss. Without a doubt, it's a huge loss. Um, we as a group of business people ourselves, we see the loss. We see that the, the without the festival this year. Now, hopefully, as I said, most of us, or a lot of us will be back open, but it still won't be the same without that festival for those 10 days. Personally, business-wise, it was fantastic. It's always, always good. But on a personal level, Henry, to see all those visitors and children, adults, happy faces around the place, it just, it, it, it makes it. And when you see people coming into town and loving it, we're winning. We're so looking forward to 2021. As I said, we're going to have a wonderful programme of events. It's going to be big, it's going to be huge. I want to welcome everybody, absolutely everybody. I'm looking forward to welcoming everybody back to Dylan's, back to my own place. And hopefully it'll be a, it'll, it'll, it'll be a, a foot, footnote in history shortly. Paul Regan is also a businessman in the town and he's certainly looking forward to getting back up and running his business. Well, I'm a Rascama man living in Mayo. I'm here 25, 26 years actually this year. We were in the Imperial Hotel or Barter House for, 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 for we had 10 very, very good years. And I'm here in Dillon's for the last eight years. 
I love it. It's, I'm passionate about what I do. It's, it's a bar and restaurant, but it's a restaurant with a bar. We will bounce back. Ballina is a great town. We have a great camaraderie. We have a great group of business people. The Chamber of Commerce is, is unbelievable. Mayo North, another fantastic group of people that continually promote Ballina. Collins Plastics is a well-known company in Ballina. Established in 1982, it remained open during the lockdown and indeed even expanded the business, as Liam Collins explains. In 1983, uh, we were basically based on making funeral reads, myself, my mother and father. That's all we ever intended to do, nothing else. Uh, through the years, the company developed and evolved. We started doing the likes of uh, point of sale displays, machine guards or factories, all working with clear plastics, clear sheeting, fabricating them. The company developed pretty well over the years, and now we're doing the likes of, uh, we've been one of the biggest fabrication companies in the country, no question about it. Uh, when we were going very well, we had 28 people here. When we were, at the moment, we had 11, sorry, up to recently. Now there's a few more, probably double staff at the moment, and still increasing. This COVID's affected us big time. COVID-19 basically hit us like a curveball. We weren't, we were moving along normally, and we thought we were all right, chugga chugga like everybody else. When COVID-19 started, come back, say, in the February, early March, it didn't seem to be a major issue. It was an issue, but not a major issue. By the time it came to around St. Patrick's weekend, it was more than an issue. It was the, the governing issue. And then when the factories start to close down, it creates its own problems. The shops closed, so the shop fellows weren't getting anything. It's created an awful lot of problems. For us, we need to redesign the company completely. What way are we going to approach all this? So then we looked at the situation and got a second now. There's a lot of movement towards these sneeze guards for likes of around tills, cash registers, all that kind of stuff. So we set up a design on all, that, all those. And it took a few days, a few nights basically, just solidly working on those, setting up new systems on it and pricing them, getting materials. Then we put that, we, we focus on that, on our natural customer base that we were working. We forget it, the ones that are closed are closed, you can't do anything about it. Just working the ones that are open. And doing that, uh, we got great feedback because we have, a much more, we have a huge customer base all over the whole country. And we targeted that and then we get on the phone, so I say, look, we are making this stuff, are you interested, whatever. And basically, uh, within about shh, maybe four to five weeks, the company actually doubled. I had to get more staff in basically, there's new machines on the way in too as well. And it just took off and I don't think it's going to stop. The current one now basically is a sneeze garage, which is literally a cash register to protect the staff inside in the shop. Okay. The next line that's taken off very well at the moment too are dividers and offices to separate all the offices. The next line coming on the heel of that is going to be the schools and the universities. We have a few big ones in there for some of the libraries and the big universities in the country. We are not just going to put a few screens here and there, we don't. We've made a few thousand screens at this particular point, you know. While we're doing all this COVID work, it has to be regarded as extra work and not the core. If you regard it as the core, you're in trouble. It's the extra work, and we have to keep the, the natural company, as, it, as it's coming back on stream right now, as a parallel. And that's very, very important to actually recognise that, and not just say, we're going off on COVID and go off on a tangent. Because COVID may stop in years' time, whatever the crack is. Or where's all that 36 years of work done? Got to hold it. So that's vitally important, two hands, yeah. And trying to keep your two hands firmly on where you're, where you're from and, and keep your feet on the ground. And that's, you can get carried away with this COVID thing. For us, like, it's important to take it for what it is, Shot in the dark, so be it. There was great excitement when local TD Derek Caleri was appointed Minister for Agriculture. We are in the middle of July, uh, normally this would be festival week, um, they'd be buzzing, you know, there'd be tour buses in the last 10 years in particular, you've seen the success of the Wild Atlantic Way. We don't have that this year and that's putting pressure on businesses. Um, but what we have in Ballina is a huge, spirit, a huge spirit of resilience. Um, you know, we get knocked down but we stand up again to quote the song. And there's massive support here in the town from the groups such as the Chamber. Um, there are some businesses who've managed to do very well through Covid, managed to readapt and look at the opportunities that are there. Other businesses are under significant pressure but they will readapt and they will make the most of the Covid recovery. And the great thing about being from Ballina and about being from Mayo is that sense of Mayo, that community gets in behind uh, other members of the community when there's challenges. And what I would say to people watching this is that your local businesses need you now more than ever. And your local business 
sponsors are the people that keep your local GA soccer team going, they sponsor the festivals, they sponsor the shows, they sponsor the Christmas lights. Without our local businesses, um, there wouldn't be any local employment. So please go offline. Please shop locally. Please, when you're making um, decisions at the moment in terms of spending money, and a lot of people are under huge pressure income-wise, think, can I get this locally? Um, can I get this out of a small local independent business that supports my community? So look, I, I think we need to work collectively and work together. Um, it's a great thing about Balna in the last number of years, there has been a sense of uh, purpose and unity in terms of your working collectively. Um, we need support um, and, and certainly I would be very passionate about supporting town renewal and town centre renewal, capital investment and as we negotiated the programme for government obviously you know this is my home and I'm very passionate about it, I'm very proud of it but you know we looked at how can we get our towns rejuvenated again, getting people back living in them, investing in them, making them good places. There's so many good things that happened here during Covid like uh, you know all the various businesses you've profiled but there's been a Amazing, we got the sound town from Today FM, the Balna sound, uh, McDuffie appeared during Covid, the community cleanup, the work um, that the team there are doing. So there's a lot of really good stuff happening. Um, but what I would appeal to people is try and get involved in it, you know, give an hour back to your community. Um, and especially now, a lot of voluntary organisations are under pressure. They've lost four or five months of fundraising, they do services, but get involved and give your time. You don't have to give money, and you may not have the money to give, but everybody has a bit of time and I think during Covid we, we got a bit of value on our time but give that time back to your community be that in Balna or anywhere else and it'll you'll get such a, a reward for it um, but most importantly as we um, we're going to be living with Covid for some time and until such time as we get a, a vaccine we have to adjust our life uh, and adjust the way we live and the way we do things um, everybody every single one of us has a role to play in beating Covid it's not somebody else's job, it's not the government's job, it's not the HSC job. We have the most amazing frontline workers who have worked so incredibly hard. We have to help them by doing things in our own personal lives, you know, washing the hands, you know, you know, wearing the masks indoors, all of the things. If we do our bit, we will beat COVID, but everybody has to be part of the effort. And then as soon as we beat COVID, we get our lives back, we get our towns back, we get our festivals back, we get our sports back to the way we want them back, and that's normal. Well, as you can see, Ballina is very much open for business and we are urging you to shop, stay and visit the town. And you can get more information by visiting ballina.ie. Don't forget to join us again next week when we bring you part two of Ballina Open for Business. So, until then, Slonga Falls.